over 2 billion interactions with job ads on our platform every year. We see about half a billion applications. And then our search engine, our AI-powered search engine, is handling thousands of requests mm -hmm. every second. So we see a lot of data on job activity and preferences across Asia. That's right, yeah, fantastic statistics there. And uh, how is Gen AI transforming some of this uh, data into sort of uh, actionable, usable sort of uh, intelligence for, the, for your users and also, I guess, for the, your clients as well? How do you see that transforming some of your services that you provide to, you know, externally? Yeah, I think the first is just making sense of and making accessible mm -hmm. a lot of uh, information that's always been there, either through summarizing it so people can get to the insights. So like job ads, CVs, there's a lot of unstructured text there. Um, there's been a lot of effort to wade through CVs and get all of the information. Now generative AI can help us summarize mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So that's one. That's right. Um, and then I think the other is on the user experience side where actually right up till now we've had to do a lot of work to translate what we think exactly. into a way a machine can understand it, right? Quite structured, a special kind of language, even to talk to a search engine today can be um, the way you structure your query. You have to think about how am I going to write this? And we've seen over time that getting better and better mm -hmm. in search. But I think in general um, you're going to see a transformation mm -hmm. where people can talk like you and I are talking in their own language and get the results they want because the AI can now understand it and it can do mm -hmm. the heavy lifting. And I think that'll open up um, new ways of interacting. Voice is one. That's um, right, yeah. But there are more coming um, and probably some coming where that we can't think about today. We, d we don't understand what that's going to look like, but I'm sure there'll be new interfaces coming. Oh, yeah, very exciting. I mean, uh, just thinking about, you know, back uh, three months ago where I saw at the Singapore FinTech Festival, they were uh, 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 celebrating this uh, AI, generative AI capability of um, creating a profile of myself talking in a different language. But, you know, fast forward three months later, that is nothing new anymore. But, but three months ago, it was like, wow, you know. Um, so you also highlighted about um, how responsible AI is very important as part of your journey to adopt AI. Can you tell us how Gen AI is perhaps uh, making that more important internally in terms yeah. of your internal policies and frameworks? So I think any time you're using technology to automate something, you need to be careful that um, you're understanding the data that you're training on and you're mm. understanding the risks in that data. And unfortunately, um, we humans are full of conscious and unconscious bias, and so we need to be thoughtful about um, both how we're using that data and making sure we're not entrenching bad decisions, um, but also knowing that AI is essentially a prediction, and that means it will be wrong mm -hmm. some of the time. And so mm -hmm. knowing when it's wrong, how you're using the AI and what the impact of being wrong to any one individual is, and are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. And so for us, that means you know, using AI to help people, but never to not show you a job or not let you apply to a job or not show your application to a hire. That's a step too far for us in how we use AI, because if the AI is wrong, we then lock someone out of an employment yeah. opportunity. Um, generative AI, I think, makes that complicated because it enables um, the generation of text, so it becomes very difficult to know what is true and what is false and what mm. is human generated or not. So um, imagine a world where we both have generative AI bots doing this interview on behalf of our human selves yep. um, and my AI bot is lying to your AI bot. Um, how do we know that and how do the listeners know that um, these are human beings? Yeah, deep um, fakes or synthetic voice and synthetic faces and all that, right? Yep. All of that. And so as the technology gets better and that becomes more common, these are the things we're going to have to face into. And so trust mm and reliability and those signals will become more important and people are going to have to make decisions around am I building my product to interact with a human or with AI? Um, mm -hmm. Both can be the right answer mm -hmm. but these are the types of questions that are coming for us. Yeah, earlier when you were doing your presentation a, a question occurred to me that you know uh, you were talking about how uh, AI can help clients write you know job uh, profiles and putting on my sort of cybersecurity hat I have also heard how AI is helping um, some of the threat actors write phishing emails, right? Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, how do you see, do you see, you know, signs of uh, candidates and users writing fake, e uh, not emails, fake uh, resumes, you know, posting fake profiles? Have you seen that at scale yet or is that emerging? 
I think what we're, what, what we're generally seeing is most people acting in good faith using these mm -hmm. tools for productivity and sometimes that can mean mm -hmm. that it generates something that doesn't get reviewed properly or sounds good when they use it and is yeah. maybe a stretch of the truth. Um, so we haven't seen it at scale causing major problems. Um, what we do see in the market a lot on the hire side is um, you know, attempts to create fake job ads and scams and um, issues around fair hiring and those kind of things. So we, you know, having control of our platform, it's a big responsibility for us to vet every hire and make sure every job is a real job in the market where it's advertised. Um, but that, this type of technology makes those kind of things much easier at scale. So if companies aren't doing that, it becomes mm -hmm. a big risk. Thank you.